Hi, my name's Ben with Heirloom Roses. We hear from a lot of our customers with questions regarding transplanting roses. They have a rose that's in a spot that's not working well for them. Either the rose has gotten too big or maybe there's not enough light and the rose is struggling and it needs to be moved to another location. So today we're going to go through the simple steps of transplanting an existing rose. The first step in transplanting your rose should take place about one week prior to digging. That's watering in your rose with a vitamin B1 transplanting fertilizer or a kelp based product. Both of these products will promote root development and make sure that the roots are vigorous and growing prior to digging. Step two is to follow our five basic steps for pruning. We're going to take this plant down to between 12 and 16 inches so that it's at a healthy state and can be safely transplanted and will flourish when we get it into its new location. Now it's early spring here in Oregon and there's a lot of great healthy foliage on this rose and a lot of people will be tempted to try to transplant your rose without cutting this all off because it's, it's kind of sad to take a step back. But it's important to cut this back, one, so that it's safe to handle the plant. There's a lot of things going on here and it's just really cumbersome to dig a big rose like that. Also, two, this plant is going to be in somewhat shock as it gets transplanted and it's going to have a difficult time supporting all this foliage it will basically wilt and could create problems on down the road. So we're taking it down to a healthy level and it will pop right back as the roots start to grow and it starts leafing out. You'll be amazed at how fast this plant will take off as it gets transplanted. The optimal time to transplant a rose is in the early spring months right after the rose has been pruned and still dormant. And it would look like this if you're doing your proper pruning. Now, if you're gonna transplant your rose in the later spring and summer months, that's okay. You just need to make sure that you get it really watered in well after you get it transplanted. And we'll go through that here in a minute. The next step, step three, is to go ahead and dig our rose out here. We'll go through and dig all the way around this rose and get as much of the root ball as we can. Now optimally you would, get, you would get all the roots, that's not possible, so what we'll do is we'll go around and cut around this rose with a sharp shovel and get as much root ball as we can. We're going to take a sharp cut straight down about 12 inches away from the center. After you cut the side roots, go ahead and start working your shovel in underneath all the way around and lifting up. Eventually you'll see that the rose breaks free and is one solid root ball. So I'll, I'll lift this out of the hole and move this onto my leaf hopper or a tarp. Now it's important when transplanting during a dry time of year or when it's hot out to get this moved right away and back into the soil. You don't want to let it sit out and let these roots get dry. They're tender and to let them dry out is not good for the plant. It's going to have a hard time recovering. The next step is to select a location in your yard that is optimal for this rose. It's got plenty, so that it has plenty of room to grow, optimal daylight, and well-drained soil. Once you have that, then we can start working on the hole. Your hole should be about six inches wider than your root ball all the way around. That will leave room for amended soil and other things that we'll need to put in around the rose to make sure it gets off to a healthy start. Now that your hole's dug, we want to go ahead and amend the soil. And we recommend using some well-aged cow manure in the bottom of the hole. Um, so we'll go ahead and put that right in the bottom. It needs to be make sure that it's well-aged so that it doesn't burn the roots. And then we recommend one cup of bone meal. And this happens to be 
fish bone meal, which is high in phosphorus and really good for root development. And we recommend about a cup of that in the bottom of the hole as well. And then we're going to go ahead and amend this with good organic uh, compost material. Uh, peat moss or garden mulch, whatever it may be. And you want to mix that about one-third uh, organic material to two-thirds good potting soil. It's important to note when transplanting a rose or when planting a new rose to not use granular fertilizer. Granular fertilizer can be really hot in nitrogen and actually burn new roots and cause the plant to be stunted. We only recommend using liquid fertilizer. It's much more gentle on the roots and does a better job with young plants up to about a year old. So as you can see we're mixing in the cow manure and the bone meal evenly throughout the hole. These roots and this rose are going to love that. Now with an own root rose there's no graft to contend with so we'll go ahead and plant it a little bit deep and actually bury the rose up above the crown somewhere right in here. A lot of people are worried about pruning a rose back to 16 inches like this in the spring but what I always tell them is we have a rule of thumb that at 60 degrees a rose will go from prune to bloom in 60 days. So at this state on a nice spring day like this moving into summer you're only two months away from having a blooming rose. The final and maybe one of the most important steps is watering in your rose after it's been transplanted. And while we started with vitamin B1 about a week prior to planting, we want to finish off with another dose of vitamin B1 to really get these roots off to a healthy start. And then throughout the summer or the rest of the year, make sure you water with a liquid fertilizer. We recommend a liquid fish fertilizer, but whatever liquid fertilizer you have should be fine but just make sure you don't use granular fertilizer on this new rose. For more information on growing roses and to shop for own root roses for your garden, visit us at heirloomroses.com.